the Alienware M17 R3 laptop eight months later. So what do I think? Do I have buyer's remorse? Stick around for my two biggest customization regrets, as well as the specs of the model that I wish that I got. Now I've already done a full basic unboxing of this laptop, but in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know in order to not make the same mistakes that I made. I'm going to show you my top three pros and cons, gaming benchmarks, design and build quality, internals, heat tests, fan noise tests, battery tests, Alienware command center controls, a review of the Toby eye tracker, some cool tips and tricks, and even some accessories that I highly recommend. The machine I got has a 10th generation i7 processor with 5.1 gigahertz turbo boost. Now I never saw the processor get that high, but let me tell you this thing is fast. This is the 4K Ultra HD screen with 500 nits brightness and the all new Toby eye tracking technology, which is pretty impressive and we'll talk about that later here in the video. I also got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Now the GPU I got is the Nvidia GeForce RTX 2070 Super with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 video RAM and those last two specs helped tremendously when it came to 4k editing. Editing in 4k was pretty seamless until I started layering multiple clips on top of each other. When that started happening I had to create proxies in order for my editing to be seamless again. Okay starting with the design. It's got a very Tron like sci-fi feel and it really does have that wow factor when you see it in person. I do kind of wish the Alienware wording on the front glowed like the rest of everything else and I also miss the glowing touchpad that you had in some of the older Alienware laptop models which brings me to one one of my two Alienware customization regrets. Getting the AlienFX 4 zone keyboard instead of getting the AlienFX per key keyboard. After watching a bunch of other Alienware reviews, I became pretty jealous, honestly, and I kind of want that. Having all of your keys cycle through all of the colors and being able to customize each color per key for different things like hotkeys or shortcuts or macros. But with all that being said, in my opinion, I still think that this is the sleekest, coolest, sexiest looking laptop that I've ever seen honestly it's it's beautiful even eight months later I still find myself looking at this thing especially at nighttime thinking man that looks nice the overall build feels pretty solid definitely not cheap by any means there's understandably quite a bit of screen flex considering how thin the display is. The hinge tension feels just about right and can hold at pretty much any position that you put it in. The only spot that it starts to get a little loose is about two, two and a half inches right above the chassis. You push it past that and it slams shut. But overall it looks really sleek, the materials feel really nice. The back feels really smooth. You can feel that the 17 on the back is raised just a little bit. It opens up one-handed pretty easily, which is pretty nice. The glass touchpad feels pretty smooth and from our test was incredibly accurate. Typing on the keyboard has a very satisfying soft click feel, which is surprising considering how thin the keys are. You definitely don't feel like the keys are too shallow. It has a pretty quiet yet somewhat soothing sound. I definitely don't regret my decision to go with the M17 over the M15. I'm really loving this big screen and honestly if the screen was bigger, I'd kind of like that. I don't want the laptop to be bigger, but I love big screens and this screen right here is probably the perfect size for me. So you can see right here in the Alienware command center where the four different color zones are. You can change the color of this section, then the keypad separately. You can change the color of the Alienware logo at the top right. You can have it change colors based on the battery power settings, which I like that a lot. I have mine set to start flashing anytime the battery is low. My favorite part of it, the almost jet engine Tron part of it, is definitely the back side of it with the honeycomb mixed with the Tron lights. Alright, so the internals. So to remove this magnesium alloy bottom panel, you just need to remove these eight screws using a small Phillips head screwdriver. You can see right here the main boot SSD comes with a copper heat sink. And right here and here you've got the other two SSD slots. It's got a fire resistant CPU fan. It's got more fan blades than ever. Now one big drawback to the new Alienware laptops is that the RAM is now soldered on the board so you can't change it later. The Wi-Fi card is soldered on the board too but that's not as big of a deal because it's using Wi-Fi 6 and honestly Wi-Fi 7 is not going to become a thing in uh, probably a really long time. And then right here at the top is the underside of the 
the CPU and the GPU. All right, so the ports. Starting from the right side of the computer, you've got your micro SD 5.1 card slot and two USB 3.1 ports. Around back, you've got your HDMI 2.0 port, your mini display port, your Thunderbolt 3 port, and a proprietary Alienware graphics amplifier port. And then your power DC in port. And then on the left, you've got your Noble lock port that you can use with a cable and lock to keep people from stealing your laptop in public places. You've got a gigabit ethernet port and another USB 3.1 port, except this one has PowerShare technology, which lets you charge devices even when the system is off. Then at the top, you've got your 720p webcam, which is good, but not great quality. I've definitely seen better webcams. And here's a little indoor sample of that webcam video quality. And here's an outdoor sample with a little bit more light. Okay, so thermal tests. You can see that around the keys area, we got temperatures over 100 degrees when pushing this machine to its max, which is pretty hot. Doesn't burn your fingers or anything. It just shows you how hard this machine is trying to work underneath. Keep in mind that the longer you push a thin laptop to its max, the shorter its lifespan is gonna be. So because this machine gets so hot, it is equipped with some pretty powerful fans, but they do get pretty loud when it comes to pushing them to their max. Here's the fan decibels at each setting. In quiet mode, the fan noise was around 56.5 decibels. Balance mode brought it up to 61.4, and at full speed it got up to 68.1 decibels. Our performance and gaming benchmarks. In Forza Horizon 4, at the highest preset setting, we got 66.9 FPS on the CPU and 171 on the GPU. At low, we got 76 on the CPU and 200 GPU. In Tomb Raider, on the highest preset settings, we got an average of 46 frames per second. At medium quality settings, we got 47 frames per second. And at the lowest preset, we got 51. Now, honestly, these aren't breathtaking FPS numbers, but it's pretty good for a laptop especially with how thin it is. For the sound, it's got two different sections for the speakers. It's got two on the front and then two on the bottom. The speakers have proven to be good, but not great. You definitely don't get a good bass sound like you would with the MacBook Pro. They kind of sounded more like glorified smartphone speakers on both sides of the computer. They were pretty loud though, despite their lack of bass and measured at almost 100 decibels at maximum volume. The M17 comes with an 86 watt hour battery, which isn't small, but it sucks power like crazy. In battery saver mode with lowest screen brightness we got one hour and 28 minutes doing 1080p streaming we got only an hour and 56 minutes and then at gaming at ultra 1080p settings we only got 51 minutes of battery life and a full recharge takes about two hours and 20 minutes this is really just a laptop that's made for people that want to plug it in and use the power to the max all right the toby eye tracker this thing was cool it worked about 80 percent of the time and when it did work it was high Highly accurate. It literally shows you what your pupils are focused on. And when turned on, it would snap your mouse pointer to the exact icon you're looking at. One cool thing about the Toby Eye Tracker that I thought was pretty cool is that you can connect it to your face and it can scan your face. And now you can unlock your laptop with your face, which I thought that was pretty cool. So I just look at it and it goes, hello, dismiss the lock screen to sign back into Windows. Then I click and then it's off. All right, so some accessories that I highly recommend that I got with this machine on Amazon. One of them was this three-in-one laptop bag, which fits this laptop pretty nicely. It's made of pretty good quality materials and almost seems waterproof. I also love the option to carry it as a backpack, suitcase, or over-the-shoulder bag. I'll put a link here in the corner if you'd like to see my full review on that. You're also gonna want a laptop stand if you wanna use this on the couch or on your bed. You definitely don't want this hot thing on your lap. Or overheating by putting it on a cloth surface where the bottom intake vents can't even suck up any air. This one from Amazon that I also did a separate review for was pretty nice and offered multiple tilt angles and could also raise and lower wherever I needed it. I'll put a link here for that full video as well. This last accessory is really nice and is perfect for a dad like me who doesn't want to wake up his wife or baby with loud mouse clicks. This mouse somehow has a nice click feedback feel and yet is almost completely silent. If you have a wife or girlfriend that always asks if you could click a little quieter, then you need this mouse. All right, so my number one customization regret was getting the 4K screen over getting the FHD screen. And let me explain why. When I have this thing on 4K mode, you can't even tell it's 4K unless you stick your eyes like all the way up onto the screen. It's, it's so sharp. Trying to squeeze 4K in a laptop monitor, I've realized now is just, it's pointless. It uses way too many resources. And because it uses so 
many resources, it slows down your machine and you get lower frame rates when you try to squeeze everything into 4K. Most computers can't even push 4K games right now as it is. Another drawback to the 4K is that the screen is maxed out at 60 hertz, which means you're never gonna get more than 60 frames per second. And I really regret that because now I will never see triple digit frame rates. And that's kind of a bummer. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but I wish I did now. So I put a link in the description of the exact model and the exact specs of the one that I wish that I got. And hopefully you guys can make the right decision for you, but that's my take on it. 4K, really not that necessary. And it costs more money. The Toby Eye Tracker was nice. It was neat. Uh, I liked some things on like Shadow Tomb Raider where looking around, it would move your camera around. That was kind of cool. It was honestly just kind of gimmicky. Not really too many big uses for it. So that was pretty unnecessary. That's part of the 4K display. Save your money. Go with the FHD with the 300 hertz display and you'll be a lot happier. All right, so my top three reasons to not get this machine. Number one is it's super expensive. I spent over $2,500 for this machine and I didn't even get the top specs. And number two is how hot it is. You're definitely gonna wanna make sure that your back vents aren't blocked in order to prevent this thing from overheating. It is pretty hard to keep a machine that's this thin from overheating too quickly. And number three is the fan noise, which is just a little bit louder than I'd like it to be. Now my favorite top three reasons to get this device, number one is the speed. This is one of the fastest gaming laptops there are on the market right now. And I'm actually blown away by how thin they were actually able to make this thing. And number two is the design. Now I know this is kind of my opinion, but I've done a lot of forum research and a lot of reviews research and collectively everybody agrees that this is one of the best looking laptops there are out there. One of the best designed laptops there are out there. Overall, this is a fantastic laptop. Although I regret my configuration choice, I definitely don't regret going with the M17. Guys, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on because every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with my channel. It's time for my weekly Amazon gift card giveaway. All of our subscribers are eligible for every future giveaway. And the winner this week is... Raven Hussein. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.